Good evening, a quorum being present for August 15th, a meeting of the Board of Trustees uh, will come to order at this time. There was no action taken in closed session this evening. Roll call, please. Dr. Fellow? Here. Mr. Osterling? Here. Mr. Hilsman? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Ms. Chen Lau? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Ms. Hua? Here. Ms. Rob? Here. Thank you. Ms. Hua, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? First uh, order of business is to approve the um, agenda, and I'd like to um, ask the board if they would uh, mind moving up two items um, at the top of the agenda. One is the um, approval of the board bylaws, and the other is a, the uh, information on the presidential search, because Mr. Duran has to has a five-hour drive ahead of him, and we thought we would. So moved. <laughs> yeah. We have a motion uh, from Mr. Osterling, a second from Ms. Hua. Student trustee? Aye. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, introductions and recognitions, Mr. President? Well, Mr. President, today we have the honor of welcoming to the board Mr. Bill Hawkins, the president of the Pasadena City College Foundation. Mr. Hawkins just, was just elected president, and uh, welcome. And Mr. Hawkins, maybe you'd like to share some uh, views with us about your new position as president of the board? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Verdian, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, delighted to have the opportunity just to spend a few minutes with you this morning, or this afternoon, and uh, give you a brief update on some of uh, uh, what's going on with the foundation. I think, uh, first of all, I, I do want to I know it's always difficult when you start making recognitions, but I think there are a couple that I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, Dr. Verdian, uh, thank you so much for your support and the assistance that you've provided to the foundation during your tenure. And also, uh, I would like to just recognize uh, Hoyt Hillsman as the liaison to the foundation. Hoyt, you've just been a tremendous asset to us, and we appreciate your guidance. Thank you so much. Um, I think uh, I'm not familiar with many of you on the board, and I'm sure you, you don't recognize me either. So just a minute or two in terms of uh, who I am and my background. Uh, I live here in the uh, Pasadena area. Actually, I live in Altadena. My wife and I live there. We're longtime residents of that area. Uh, I have uh, been fairly active in various nonprofits here in the uh, Pasadena area for a number of years, served in various capacities with a number of uh, nonprofits that you'll probably recognize. Uh, in addition to that, um, my professional experience has been primarily in the uh, financial services area. I had a brief uh, stint of starting and building banks here in the Pasadena area, and, but most of my career has been in the investment management sector, and uh, both on the retail, wholesale, and at the governance level. And uh, it's quite a good experience and uh, very enjoyable and met some really fine people during the course of that experience. Um, I guess uh, the, the thing that I'd like to just update you on is that uh, we have had, I believe, uh, a couple of really fine things occur of late. Uh, the first is, is that, as you know, we have this major gifts campaign going on. And uh, under the leadership of Dr. Jack Scott, uh, that uh, campaign has moved along very, very nicely. And as a result of Dr. Scott's initiatives, uh, we recently um, received a donation of the Child Development Center building uh, with that gift that has put us well over our initial goal 
We're now uh, at, of $10 million. We have um, a stretch goal of trying to get to uh, $12 million, uh, before it ends uh, in June of 2019. I think that uh, with the, the people that are involved and the support that we receive from the community, uh, I think the likelihood of us reaching that objective is uh, extremely likely. Uh, the other thing I would uh, want to mention to you is that, as you know, uh, we do about three quarters of a million dollars. We administer about three quarters of a million dollars for scholarships each year. And uh, we, that will continue. And in addition to that, we have set aside $100,000 for uh, second year promise program. And uh, additionally, we have set aside uh, $300,000 for the refurbishing of or rest restoration of the athletic field. So I think those are Im important initiatives for us, and we're, we're very proud of, 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 those, um, of our ability to do those things. I, th I guess what I would say to you is that, you know, in all likelihood, you probably have an interest in what the outlook is for the foundation and what we look forward to doing during the two-year tenure that I'm about to serve. I would begin by saying that, uh, first and foremost, we have uh, been fortunate enough to have an extremely qualified executive director who is at the helm of the foundation. And truth be known, I mean, she is the uh, energy that makes so much of what happens at the foundation happen, and that's Bobby Abrams. So uh, I would begin by saying that. I think the other thing that I would say to you is that uh, rather than going through a list of things that we expect to do from a strategic standpoint and, you know, from uh, a structural standpoint, what I would say to you is that what I uh, want to do is to try and build on the legacy that has been created by people like John Cushman, Bill Opal, John Gregory, Lonnie Shield, and my predecessor, Jim Sarney. Those folks have led the foundation exceedingly well, and it's my objective and commitment to try and do as good a job as they've done. So with that, uh, thank you for your time. I want to be respectful of it. And um, if you have any questions uh, that you'd like to ask of me, I'd be happy to entertain them. Is there any questions this evening? I do want to congratulate you, and I wish you a, a great two-year tenure. And uh, again, you're working with a, a great executive director. Thank you very much. Thank very you. Much. Good night, everybody. And I just want to say as liaison, congratulations, Bill, and thank you for your leadership. Thank you. And I'd like to say that as a former foundation member, it um, certainly has been a privilege to serve on the PCC Foundation with Jim Sarney, and I definitely have seen the good work that Bobby has done for the foundation, and I hope that you will get to the $12 million mm. and more by June 2019. I'm sure we will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other introductions or recognitions from the board this evening? That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, this is the time for public comments. Um, we have none. Thank you very much. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the board uh, for July 18th. Move approval. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Brown, a second from Ms. Waugh. Further discussion? Student trustee? Aye. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. We'll now, since we've uh, reordered the um, agenda, um, take um, action item number six, approval of board bylaws, which deals with the superintendent uh, president's uh, uh, selection. It's the uh, new uh, committee that we've uh, established. And uh, you have that information in your packets. Move to approve. We have a motion from Ms. Waugh, and I'll second. Second. And a second from uh, Mr. Hillsman. Uh, further discussion? Student trustee? Aye. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
We now have uh, the, um, one of our consultants here who is doing the search, Dr. Duran. Would you like to speak at this time? Yes, thank you, President Fellow and members of the board, uh, folks who are listening in both virtually and, and here. I just have a, I want to take this opportunity to, to let you know where we are with, with respect to the search. Uh, really an important thing that's going on here. And I, since my last report to you, we uh, have launched the recruitment process for this, uh, for this position. And I just want to let you know that in addition to submitting, sending out electronically the position announcement and the links to have individuals uh, get on and, and apply, we have sent those to uh, the chief executive officers throughout California, the chief instructional officers throughout California, stu chief student services officers, chief business officials, and uh, chief human resources officials. That's typically the way we get the word out in California because they then will either consider it themselves or, will, or hopefully will pass it on to individuals uh, they think would be a good candidate for your, for your position. In addition to that, at PPL, we have a, 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 a proprietary, if you will, uh, a database that we use, and we send it to about 280, 90 individuals in California that we've added to our base. They include folks from the four-year area also, people that might, there are people who come out of the baccalaureate uh, granting institutions who oftentimes are, would like to make a, a move into community colleges, so, but includes also community college people. In addition to that, uh, in addition to that, that list also includes over 600 individuals throughout the United States that we've added to our database, and that database is maintained on a regular basis, so we, we call it pretty often to make sure we send out, uh, we send out messages asking people if they still want to uh, stay on the database and uh, we want to make sure so if people either don't respond or tell us they want it off, then we take it off. So it's a, so it's a pretty solid base and we always get good uh, reaction from it. In addition to that, we've sent the, app, the, um, the announcement out to, to universities and uh, placement uh, organizations and agencies uh, throughout the United States that, uh, that serve uh, higher education and as a result the word is out there. We're starting now to get then comments back. We're starting to get inquiries and so we've had uh, individuals call both me and my, uh, my partner uh, Dr. Dean Cowley or uh, Cawley. I'm glad he wasn't here. I mispronounced his name. <laughs> Don't tell him. The, uh, and then uh, or either by email or by telephone call. But the other thing that we do, as I, as I told you before, what we also do is we put our heads together with all of our partners, with, our, with the five partners in our company, and we come up with names of individuals we believe in California who might be sitting in a, in a, in a position right now where they're comfortable, aren't necessarily thinking of moving, but this would be a good move for them. So we, we put our heads together and we've come up with um, about 35 individuals that both Dean and I are, um, are pursuing. And since, uh, since last week, I have had very good, ex very good uh, experience with them. Uh, I have about seven or eight of them who have essentially said, yeah, I'm either in or I'm gonna be in as soon as I check with my wife. I, you know, uh, so, so I think that um, that that is going to be very, very helpful to the pool. And I would, I would end it by saying that there is a really good buzz in California about this <coughs> position. This is one of the plum positions in California. There are people who are excited and interested about it, and we're hoping to get a really, really strong pool. September 14 is when the, uh, when the um, deadline is for folks to submit their um, their applications and then shortly thereafter the, the, the reading committee, the search committee will weigh into them to, uh, to come away with a, with a selection of individuals who will be interviewed. On the 14th also, that same day that the 
that the uh, position uh, the position uh, is closing. Uh, we're also having a training here on campus with the search committee representing the constituent groups uh, from throughout the campus. And so it's going to be a, a fun, fun day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a long day, but, uh, but essential to our search process to make sure that the process really moves along smoothly to make sure that the constituent groups are involved uh, with you folks. And, uh, and there will be trainings going on. There will be the development of questions. There will be the development of a rubric for the selection of candidates. And, uh, and so it will it'll move right along. Uh, on the 28th, or the 28th, I think it is, on the 28th, they will come together to select the individuals that they want to interview uh, for the interviews that they will be holding in October. And after that, it's like grease lightning. It just takes off. And so uh, everything will be moving along in place. Uh, Linda Beam has done a wonderful, wonderful job of setting to, uh, a, a, very, a very good calendar, a calendar that if we adhere to, uh, gets us to a new president by your December 12 board meeting. So that's my report, and I'd be happy to answer Thank any you, questions Dr. that you might Are have. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Mm. Seeing none, uh, thank, thank you. you. And this time I brought, I brought a, a chauffeur with me, my son, son. Alexander, who starts, uh, who starts his university classes next week. So he was, he's driving me home today. So, that's so cool. appreciate it. <laughs> thank you all. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. The next order of business this evening is the consent calendar, and seeing that there are no items dealing with students this evening, we will move on to the instruction of the uh, column and um, the wishes of the – any, any uh, trustee <coughs> want to pull anything or need more information? If not, I'll entertain a motion to move, move approval. Sorry, Ms. Walker. Well, <laughs> okay. well, no, I, I go ahead and do the move. I just had a comment to make, so I didn't want to pull anything. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, so on, on E4, I just wanted to thank Dr. Verdi. And so one of the questions I asked was um, whether or not we could get more demographic information about who, is who are attending these classes, what trustee areas they come from, what kinds of uh, classes are of most interest in our areas. And I thought that would be helpful for the trustees. So I know Dr. Verdi is looking, um, is, is gathering that information. So I just wanted to let the other trustees know I think that will be helpful for all of us in our areas. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Watt. Sure. Uh, so far, what the information that I have that I will be distributing to the other trustees also is a breakdown of uh, where the students are coming from. But what I have asked Dr. Bell to find out is to go by a uh, cluster of classes that we offer for extended programs and see where they are coming from. And as soon as I have that information, I'm, uh, Dr. Bell has assured me that I will be getting that by the end of next week we will draft something and we will send everything to the, all the board members and you will have an idea as to what the residents of your specific areas are taking in extended education and in contract education. Yes, I, I think that would be helpful and the reason I, I had just had uh, breakfast with one of my community members and he told me he took one of the classes and it was on contract bidding and it was because he was doing government contract bidding so he wanted to know more and then he relayed that there was another community member who had gotten a certificate from us and it would enable them to go to change their career and to do some interesting things mm -hmm. so anyway I just think that's great information for us to have so thank you very much for doing that. Thank you Ms. Waugh. Further discussion? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, I'll, uh, any, anything else? Student trustee? Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimous. The second uh, group of uh, consent items dealing, deal with uh, business. And the wishes of the trustees? I move approval. Second. We have a motion uh, uh, and on the floor. Uh, Mr. Martin? I, I have a comment on F-19, sure. Sure. if I could. Go ahead. So F-19 is uh, $1.5 million for the uh, firm to lead the construction of the new U building <coughs> replacement, if I have that correct. And uh, obviously this is a lot of money, but even more important, this is a critical position for a very expensive project and a very important project for this college. And I know when it comes to these positions, fortuitously, we're not required just to accept the lowest bidder. Um, it's kind of like your personal doctor or your personal lawyer. There's not just knowing the material, but there needs to be the right relationship and give and take and all that. 
And so I would appreciate just a short report before we vote on why you selected the firm we selected, giving me the comfort that you have that comfort in this firm uh, to lead this very important project forward. Uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Storty to give that information to us right now. Do you have the information, Dr. Storty? Yes, I do. Um, the district actually um, did a request for proposals. Um, different firms uh, responded. We had four firms who uh, submitted proposals, and we interviewed each one of the firms. And um, the amount 1.5 million, that's a set amount by the state. So the state will be funding um, the construction management services for the U building. So all the firms, um, regardless, would be compensated that amount. So we didn't go with the lowest bid. But we looked at um, the relationship, the experience, and in, in our view, uh, the committee that evaluated the firms view that um, this firm is the most experienced and most responsive for, for this project. Uh, Dr. Story, is there any way you could uh, give us a little briefing on uh, how the members of that committee were selected? Uh, it was an internal work group, uh, so we included uh, a team from facilities, um, myself, and uh, from fiscal. How, we, many, we, how many people were on the committee? Uh, four people. And it was pretty unanimous across the committee. This was the firm. It was. It was. And we had a we had a pretty detailed uh, rubric on different parameters how to score score the construction management firms, and it was unanimous uh, going in this direction. And I I don't know any of these firms, and I don't have any preference at all. I just was hoping to get a little more reassurance that we're in good hands, because they're important hands that we're in. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Martin. If I may add, um, <coughs> one of the firms that did the pr proposed also was uh, GKK, who is uh, <coughs> the architect for the project. And they scored high, but um, the district felt that, you know, it's better to keep it separate because it's more of a check and balances as far as the cost, um, bidding the cost, estimating the cost. Um, so we felt it would be better to go in a different direction from GKK. Thank you. Mr. Ostrom. Uh, just a quick follow-up question. Um, Given the status of where we're at in the planning of that, um, this is really just a timing question. Uh, when does the uh, CM construction management firm start to get involved in this building? In other words, are we selecting this right now because they're going to immediately go to work? We actually would have selected them earlier, um, probably in March, April time frame. Um, however, at that particular time, um, the certainty of funding for the project, it was, it was just uncertain with, with, the, with the budget. Um, the governor did sign uh, funding for the second year um, into law, so we're approving this now, and GKK will be working um, with the firm selected that's being recommended um, extensively from now until December 31st, and what they're doing is they're preparing the, the working drawings that will be submitted to DSA uh, for approval. So our target is to have the plans developed and submitted to DSA by December 31st, and that will allow DSA a six-month period to review the plans <laughs> and um, hopefully sign, uh, approve them by, by uh, June 30th so we can begin next fiscal year with the construction phase of the project. Thank you. And can I have another follow-up? So just remind me now that you mentioned that where are we with bidding when in this process would we bid for the actual construction general contractor to to build the project? That wouldn't happen until spring of uh, 2019. Will we have the plans back from DSA so that they're bidding a marked up yes. set? Yes, yes. That sounds very important. Very important. At the next board meeting, we will be presenting, GKK will come to make a presentation on the plan that will be submitted. Is that correct, Dr. Stone? That's correct. We're starting to drift off of F, off this one, but there were a few flaws in our design that the state approved, and I know we were working, and I guess that would be part of next time's presentation, on the way that we could supplement whatever the state is doing for us in a way to make sure the building fits all our needs. So will we be hearing about some of those issues next time. 
Yeah, next at the next board meeting, GKK will be providing more of an extensive update, but I can provide you with a, a couple of things. Uh, the original plans included one elevator, which is problematic from you know many standpoints. You have chemicals moving up and down the elevator, and you don't want to have students doing the same thing at, at the same time. So we were able to work with the Chancellor's Office, Department of Finance, to add two additional elevators to the building. Right. So it'll be very similar to the existing U building, which has three elevators. So there'll be an elevator for you know bringing chemicals up and down, and two separate elevators for uh, for for students and staff. Mm -hmm. And um, Size, we're really restricted on the size, but GKK has been working diligently and they'll provide more of an update um, next at, at our next board meeting as far as what the size. They actually were able to um, convince the Chancellor's Office to provide a little bit of leeway in the outside uh, design of the building, which would make it blend uh, a little bit better uh, with the existing campus architecture. Good. Thank you. Any other Can't comments wait. or questions? Very good. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Student trustee? Aye. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion um, carries. Excuse me, no. I'm going to abstain from this. One abstention. Thank and you. I'm, and I just wanted to explain that I'm abstaining because I want to understand the process a little bit more in terms of whether this is a competitive process and how that process works. And since this has been in discussion in October, I would just like to know more about it before I vote on it in the next board meeting. Thank you. You're going to be a great board member because anytime you abstain, you're supposed to state why, and most people don't, but you did. Oh, thank you Thank very you. Much. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. No, one abstention. One abstention. One abstention, Tony. excuse me. Um, the next items deal with uh, personnel issues and the wishes of the trustees. Move approval. Second. We have a, uh, a motion from Mr. Hillsman, a second from uh, Mr. Osterling. Uh, the student trustee does not vote on personnel issues. Uh, further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. We now go into action items this evening. And the first action item um, is approval of the modifications to the credit curriculum. Dr. S uh, Dr. Junior, would you please introduce the item? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Verdian. Uh, it's actually a really small list. There's just the one uh, program in uh, child development that's coming to you for your approval. Um, and there were some questions about it. Hopefully those were answered with the information, but I'm, I'll gladly answer any others that you might have. Actually, I, I will actually add one thing that I didn't tell you because um, uh, certificates, degrees, and units um, help students place into higher level jobs in, in um, uh, child care. Uh, it actually also benefits the centers. And so centers get score that influences the amount of funding they can get, uh, including state funding, and, and the higher level of education that your teachers and assistants have, the higher score you have, and so the more funding that you can benefit from. So it also actually benefits the, um, the, the schools and our child care centers that hire uh, people with degrees. Is there any further comments or questions? I'd like to just say how pleased I am with that, especially with a four-year-old in preschool, how much I appreciate, you know, this level of certification, and that aligns with the NAEYC, and my son goes to the Children's Education Center in La Cañada, and I'm sure that they would appreciate more students coming from PCC with that type of certification, so thank you. The wishes of the trustees? Move approval. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Uh, Brown, a second from Mr. Osterling. Um, further discussion? Student trustee? Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? A motion carries unanimously. The second um, action item this evening is authorization to transmit the fourth quarterly financial status report. This is just a recommendation to uh, transmit the fourth quarterly report to the Chancellor's Office. It is a routine transaction that we do every quarter. Wishes of the trustees? Motion mm -hmm. to approve. We have a motion from Mr. Osterling, a second from Ms. Waugh. Further discussion? Student trustee? Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
The third item this evening is adopt resolution 592, the approval of the GAN appropriations limits for 2018 and 2019. Once more, it's a routine transaction where we have to uh, send to the state uh, our appropriation limit for the subsequent fiscal year, not exceeding the COLA. So okay. moved. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Martin, a second from uh, Ms. Waugh. Mr. Osterling? Just a quick question, and I probably asked the same question last year, so I apologize. On the worksheet, um, the appropriation subject, the, appro the appropriation limits 244 million, and then there's a uh, second calculation of 123 million, and I just don't understand how that second calculation works and what the relevance of the second calculation is. Dr. Stoney? The $244 million, that's the amount, that's our limit. So based on um, the, the GAN law it was passed in 1979, and it was a piggyback off of uh, Proposition 13, which passed the year before. So it's been in effect for um, almost 40 years, or a little over 40 years. But what it requires is, based on um, inflation, and um, growth in population in, in areas that a, a district or agency serves, the funding cannot exceed that level. And where we currently are is the $123 million. So we're well below what the limit is just because funding has not grown at the same level as the growth in the population and growth in inflation. Mm. Thank you. Further questions? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, Student trustee? Aye. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The fourth item this evening is the interfund transfer of capital outlay funds and other internal uh, service funds dealing with PERS and STRS for fiscal year 2017, uh, 2018. Dr. Verdian? I have asked that this item be placed in the uh, action item because I do want to thank the Audit and Budget Subcommittee for the guidance that they have provided college administration in uh, the way we prepare our budget and in the way we transfer funds in order to meet future liabilities that can come to the, uh, to the district. And uh, this is a very substantial amount of uh, $5 million that will be transferred, one for capital outlay that will help us uh, meet the uh, differences in the funding that we will be getting for the U building. And the second one is $3 million for the uh, STRS and uh, PERS uh, contributions that the college has to make. And by 2021, we will be reaching a very significantly high level of contributions. And I want to reassure the board that uh, through the fiscal prudency that we have shown in the management of our funds, we will not uh, have uh, any difficulty meeting our payments when uh, the contributions for PERS and STRS reach their maximum limit. That correct, Dr. Story? That's correct. Further discussion? Yeah, I, I just had a question. I know that it was answered in the, in the email that I had sent, um, but for a layperson sitting here, I, I just wanted to see if I could translate it a little bit <clears throat> in terms that I would understand. Mm -hmm. The three million that's going into PERS and STRS, is, are we in effect putting that in the piggy bank for the future growth of PERS and STRS? Is that what it amounts to? That's exactly what we're doing. Okay. And yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Student trustee? Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The final um, and an exciting one, uh, action item is the dual enrollment memorandum with the Pasadena Unified School District. Well, this is a great day for Pasadena City College, for the Pasadena Unified School District, and for our district in, in general, for the Pasadena Area Community College District. Today marks the, if you want, the, the final step in the official uh, acceptance and, of the memorandum of understanding between the PUSD and the PAACCD because the state requires that we have a signed MOU between the two parties and the submission of that information to the state and then we can start the dual enrollment program. And we have been able to do that. We have uh, met the deadline right on time 
and classes will be starting, are starting already, right? But uh, we have... You want me to comment on that? Why don't you comment on that? <laughs> so, so we're actually required to have this agreement already approved by both boards and signed and uh, in Sacramento in the chancellor's office before classes start. Um, in order for us to better partner with the high schools, we're, we're actually scheduling these classes based on their calendar. And so uh, we actually had six classes starting at John Muir High School this past Monday. Um, and so uh, you haven't approved it yet. I'm hoping that you will do that shortly. Um, I have the signature page here in front of me. So um, if you approve it, Dr. Verdian will sign it. And um, Javi will send it to the chancellor's office by e express mail tomorrow morning. Um, Dr. Verdian has talked to uh, uh, Eloy Oakley and he has assured him that because we are doing the right things for our students, that it will not be an issue that this actually arrived a few days after classes started at John Muir High School. So, and, 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 I'll, and I know I think it was in your uh, report, but I'll go ahead and steal that. Um, we actually have 230 students enrolled at John Muir High School in those six sections of classes. So we've, the, we are starting off really, really well um, with the first group of classes that we're offering there. Um, really? and, and, and we have a lot of work going on right now to expand this to other high schools. Obviously, John Muir's first, but, um, right. but we have quite a few other high schools that um, uh, we, we are uh, working on the agreement because they're in other districts, but then also working with principals within PUSD to expand our offerings to other high schools within the PUSD district as well. Ms. Brown. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just want to commend this administration, Dr. Verdian, and all his staff for working so diligently. It was like pulling teeth on occasion. But here we are at the finish line, and we all win. And I just appreciate this is a good day for our students in the entire school district. Thank you. Ms. Brown, you did a great deal of work on this since you got on oh, this Lord, board. Oh, don't and mention Would you like to um, make the motion to approve? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I move approval of this wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> second. And we have a second from Ms. Waugh. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Student trustee. Aye. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Very good. Thank you. We now it's the, it's the time for announcements, and uh, we'll go to um, shared governance and uh, from the Academic Senate, Ms. Rogoff. You skip me. I you skip the uh, superintendent. What did I? Do <laughs> <laughs> you have something to say? Oh, can we go to the superintendent first? Of yes. course. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. You want to go first? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. And go I'll ahead. come back later. All right. And thank you, Dr. Verdian. We'll go through that. Um, first off, I'd like to uh, mention the rest of the executive committee that was elected in this last election cycle. Uh, Vice President Sheila Rose is staying on as our vice president. Thankfully, she's a huge asset to the group. Um, Dr. Matt Hennes from mathematics is our new secretary. And Dr. Uh, Veronica Jaramillo from natural sciences is our treasurer. Uh, also, it, this week, we started our new faculty orientation, and Dr. Sheila Rose is leading that effort to welcome our new full-time faculty to the campus, and so I'd like to thank her for her efforts. Um, it's quite a big task, and she always does a great job of it every single year. Uh, coming up at the end of next week, as I would mentioned at the last meeting, is the Flex Day, and I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Valerie Foster for her efforts as the faculty, or I'm sorry, as the Flex Advisory Committee Chair, and the rest of the Flex Advisory Committee for creating a wonderful program for both faculty and staff on that day. In terms of Academic Senate activities, our first meeting and our retreat will be on September 10th, and at our retreat we'll discuss our strategic goals for the fall semester. And lastly, uh, the Accreditation Standing Committee. I'd like to thank um, Crystal Kalros, who is the Accreditation Liaison Officer for the college. Um, she will be helping to lead the campus through a very rigorous review of the standards um, so that we're in a good position to start writing our institutional self-evaluation report, ideally forming those writing groups in the spring. And so we're getting started on that very important shared governance process. Thank you very much. And, and uh, good luck on this academic year. Good job ahead of you. Um, 
Tito Altamirano. Yes, sir. I just want to say uh, congratulations and thank you really on commending us on approving the, the bylaws for the presidential search. It's something that a lot of the constituent groups have raised their concern and really happy that we're listened to. And just I'm excited to have direct feedback uh, from our respective constituents on the presidential search and looking forward to taking part in that myself. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to just commend as well Dr. Cynthia Oliva, who, as the VP of Student Services, we held a student services retreat yesterday for the managers. And it was, um, again, focused on obviously our students, but one of the highlights of it was actually took, a, for the lack of a better word, a field trip around Pasadena, but in the more of a historical context as far as our students, where they're coming from, and really the how again uh, you, i remember uh trustee watch about the numbers as far as how we're looking at how that actually changed over time and i really feel that's something that as the ma i'm going to talk with again not only with dr but with michael and uh, will sims who helped bring it on to have all of our managers actually take part in something similar so they can really understand um how to better serve our students by working with their faculty and what are their direct needs and some of those concerns that they bring forward to the classroom each and every day so just something just thank you for that it was a great experience that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, um, Ms. Felicia Mitchell from Class. Good Classified. afternoon. We have nothing to report at this time. Thank you for being here. And uh, this evening we have uh, Dion Shelton. Hello. Um, so AS just returned from their retreat where we did a lot of team building exercises and we learned a lot of uh, great positive, positive communication skills as, as well as a lot of ethical talk um, about how to uh, deciphered through situations ethically um, and we have planned and prepared our welcoming day and welcoming week um, we have the events for that ready to go and underway and we are also looking for volunteers for our Lancer family day that's it thank you and again I, I talked to the president I'd like to come to some of your meetings as I usually do when I'm president I enjoy that you guys do a great job thank you thank you now we'll come to Dr. All Verdeen. right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Well, you know that the campus is humming with activity. The fall <laughs> semester will be starting in uh, less than 10 days. Our fall enrollment as of this morning, credit and non-credit, is 26,000 plus students. And uh, we have 2,999 sections that we are offering. This is pretty significant and it, it continues to show the dominance that Pasadena City College has in this uh, Southern uh, California area. Enrollment is declining statewide. 58 out of the 72 districts are experiencing declining enrollment. And we are one of the 14 showing an increase in enrollment. Data presented by the state and by the chancellor's office indicate that K-12 and colleges and universities will be losing 1% enrollment all the way through 2025. Then it will be flat and an uptick will start around 2031, 2032. But we are doing something, something really good at Pasadena City College and we are, our, men, our enrollment is pretty solid and let us hope that we can maintain this enrollment. Uh, you heard from Dr. Junior earlier on about John Muir and the 230 students with dual enrollment. But some other members of our community have already found creative ways to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Will Sims, who leads the talent search program in our TRIO program office, was part of a group effort led by a wide range of community organizations that welcomed young people to their first day of classes at PUSD. William Sims and his compatriots greeted students at Altadena Elementary School, Elliott Middle School, and John Muir High School this past Monday, cheering them on and encouraging them to, change, to charge forward into the new school year. We are proud that our faculty and staff give so much back to their communities. Uh, preparations at the college are underway for when the Aspen Institute will be visiting the college on the 28th and 29th of August. Three of you will be present uh, on the 28th of August for a luncheon with the team. And I want to recognize the work of Dr. Cynthia Olivo, who has been working very, very hard coordinating our campus's response, and who has been in liaising with the Institute on a regular basis and preparing our college faculty and staff and students for when the 
uh, panel visits the college. Hopefully, we will be number one this year. <laughs> Next Friday, as uh, Ms. Lenora Rogax mentioned to you, is our college-wide professional development day. You have all received invitations to attend the event that will start with a breakfast. There will be welcoming remarks uh, in the Saxon uh, Theater, and there will be plenty of uh, activities for members of the college community to take part in. Our design technology students uh, competed yet again last week in the annual Formula E competition. Does anybody know what Formula E stands for? Yeah. yeah. Oh, now you were there, that's why you would know. <laughs> Let's ask about those who are not here, if anybody knows, those who are not up there at that event. No? No, what is it? Formula E? Elastic for rubber band. Oh. Like you, the old rubber band racers, but right. much more high tech. Uh, <laughs> So that competition was hosted by the Arts Center, and uh, our team did very well, although they were the only two-year college team competing against four-year colleges and international students. Uh, I want to end my report by uh, informing everybody that I have asked Dr. Juni to chair a task force, and uh, in that task force, he is going to be assisted by Dr. Olivo and Dr. Story. Their job is going to be to look at how we can maximize uh, the new funding formula that is out there. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, 20% of our funding will be coming from student success. There are multiple ways in which we can maximize that funding so that we can benefit from the, that student success portion of the funding. For an institution our size, 20% of our budget, you've heard 244 million, 20% of that budget, that's a huge amount of money. We have a huge uh, faculty obligation number, 427 full-time faculty. And it is important for us to be able to figure out how we can do that so that we do not lose 20% of our funding. Our FTES, we are very solid in full-time equivalent students, but that will contribute only 60% of our budget. It used to contribute 100%. That amount is going down to 60%. So we will have to figure out how we are going to get that money. 20% will go towards equity, and uh, that, of course, we have no control over because that is based on the students that we get, whether they are on... Uh, Board of Governors fee waiver, which is now called the Promise Program, or whether they are on Pell Grant, whether they are on financial aid, that will determine that 20%. There's nothing more than we, we can't control that. But the other remaining 20%, it is very important. So I have asked Dr. Juni to chair that task force with the support of Drs. Olivo and Storti. They will give me a plan by the 15th of September. We will work with the college community to see how that plan can be implemented, and there will be presentation to the board at the October meeting so that the board can have an idea as to what we are doing to be fis uh, fiscally responsible to ensure that the college has the appropriate financing to meet its obligations. And this will conclude my report. As uh, president, I talk to Dr. Birdie and maybe two, three times a day, <laughs> as soon as he gets up in the morning and before he goes to bed, it's always, <laughs> because I'm always interested if everybody's happy. And um, we're beginning this academic year where everyone seems to be happy. The students are happy, the faculty are happy, the classified is happy, and uh, I hope it continues that way. Well, let's hope it continues like that. <laughs> Thank you for your uh, leadership. Now we'll uh, turn to our student trustee, Ms. Red. Okay, so um, multiple things. I've talked to both the student workers and the incoming students at the Welcome Center, and it's still prospering and doing great because students are learning more about what this college has to offer. Um, also, incoming pathway students are learning a lot from their jam sessions. I visited a couple classes today, and they were having a lot of fun <laughs> while learning about the organizations and opportunities PCC has to offer. Um, fall semester is right around the corner, and it's very exciting and scary for students, but mostly exciting. <laughs> but yeah, and I want to thank the board. Um, this is a personal note. Um, I went to the student trustee conference um, over the weekend in the San Francisco, and just seeing the relationship the student trustees have with their board isn't great in comparison to our <laughs> my relationship with you guys. Um, and having a good connection with the student trustees, having a good connection with the students, um, 
And so, yeah, I'd really like to thank you all. Thank you so much. Well, thank you That's for it. being here. Appreciate it. And our newest trustee, um, Ms. Chin Lau. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank you, President Fellows, for appointing me to be on the KPCC committee, as well as Trustee Helsman for allowing me to share in his spotlight a little bit to serve on as a liaison along with him on the um, foundation board. And if you would indulge me, last month when I was sworn in, I forgot to thank my husband and my kids. So my <laughs> husband reminded me that I did not thank him. So I would like to take this moment to say thank you, James, and to my kids, Clementine and Chase, for helping me to be here today. Thank you. And they're it's watching on the record. On TV. Yes, they are. <laughs> thank you very much. Ms. Brown. I have no report. Mr. Osterling. No report. Mr. Hilsman. Uh, just to say that uh, I was thrilled to see that Amazon is um, partnering with PCC and a num number of other community colleges and high schools, I believe, in a certificate program in cloud computing. And uh, I'm, I imagine that Salvatrice had something to do with that or some participation, maybe not. But uh, it's uh, definitely a step in the right direction. And it shows how, uh, by engaging uh, industry, business, uh, nonprofits, and the other outside uh, communities, that we can um, keep moving in a fast-moving world uh, for our students uh, and in the certificate program so that there will be great jobs waiting for them uh, when they get out if they decide not to go for four-year programs. Um, so I think that that's a great step forward, and I, I also think that it's, um, Alex, I think it's a great uh, sort of a message, I think, to the, to the world that we're um, the direction, one of the directions that we're heading. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Mr. Martin. Well, I wasn't, but I'm going to follow up on Hoyt's comments because I just came back from Seattle and learned quite a bit about Amazon while I was up there, and one of the things I learned was that they – are growing in their Seattle offices. They own 25% of downtown Seattle. Uh, about 1,000 employees a week. Mm. And the average starting salary for those employees is something close to $100,000. So it does thrill me to see this relationship uh, with Amazon. And uh, just to add to the faculty classified students, um, I'm happy. <laughs> You're ha everybody's happy. I'm just Thank you. thought I'd like I'm happy you know about the report. weather. I don't know. Okay. This wall, I'm just happy. <laughs> sure, I'm happy too. <laughs> oh my God, that's not right. Okay, so um, so I, I wanted to just uh, just acknowledge uh, Congresswoman Chu's um, all of her work on getting the VA clinic over here in Pasadena. So there is an agreement now between CHAPS Health Center and uh, the VA. So Congresswoman Chu had her uh, had a town hall so the public could come in and, and ask questions. So anyway, I think this is something that's really a, a good benefit for our veterans in our area. I've announced it in my community, and so they've been quite supportive of the veterans and are thrilled to hear that our veterans are getting some medical help close by and not having to travel 20 and 30 miles to get there. I also wanted to thank um, Professor Lee and um, Professor Kong for their work on the e-formula car race. So we did have five teams. Unfortunately, they didn't make it to the finals, but um, I had a chance to meet all of the teams, and one of the young men from one of the teams I met was actually in the healthcare business, but he came in to PCC to take a class and study with, um, with Professor Lee and got into this competition and talked about how now this is really spurring his interest in engineering and science. And, um, and he had been looking for an opportunity to change careers. So I think these are really great opportunities for all of our, our students. Um, and then on the state uh, trustee level, so there have been several calls for trustee involvement. You saw there's a, so for those of you who are going to New York, there's a call to get involved as an ambassador at the ACCT. I encourage you to do that. Um, there will be other opportunities, but it's a really great way to uh, interact with other trustees across the nation and, um, and just uh, get involved at the national level. And many of the initiatives that are happening at the national level um, are very similar to the initiatives that are happening here in California. And the next ACCT after uh, the New York conference will be in San Francisco. 
and they will be giving our joint caucuses a plenary session so we can talk about the issues that affect um, that our, our caucuses in the state um, are focusing on, so our common cause issues. Um, the other thing, and uh, President Moreno, who is the league president and a trustee, has asked uh, to form several task forces of the trustees to look at issues that are affecting our students across the state, primarily um, the homelessness issue, the food and the ho uh, housing security, well, food and homelessness, and, the, um, and then the financial aid. So I will be leading the task force on the financial aid and um, there will be five of us, so I'll be co-chairing that with one of the CEOs. But, um, but I, I'm going to just put out a call to all the trustees that as the task force you know, gathers more information that you all look at um, things that are affecting our students and also come up with ideas because it will affect our college and it will be input into the statewide issues. Mm -hmm. Um, I think President Moreno is also going to be asking that um, the trustees look at every and, and put a call out to all of the campuses to find out what they are doing to, um, to answer calls for help from our students for um, food insecurity and the, the housing insecurity issues. So, um, so luckily we have already done a great job, I think, and thank you Dr. Olivo and her staff for really moving that forward. But. Um, but I think we can all do best practices and we can all learn from each other, so. Um, and then the last thing is, um, I did ask Cal State LA to uh, do a tour for some of the students in our area. Okay, so primarily it's because my two granddaughters want to go into law enforcement. So um, Cal State LA has the number one CSI lab in the nation. So I asked um, if I could have a tour and I thought, well, you know, I'll take some of um, our students. Anyway, it turned out to be really good and then I got a call from several other um, teachers in my uh, community who asked if their students could also go on tour. So I just want to open that up to all of the trustees and all of our students here. Um, so I met with Dean Vogel who is the Dean of um, the School of uh, Health and Sciences, so the Rongsheng Shu uh, School. And so he said, yeah, he would be willing to, uh, to do that for us. So anyway, I opened that up to everyone in the community. And then I think we had the passing of one of our, our uh, someone in our community, so. Well, I was gonna bring that up oh, after. Okay. I was gonna ask we were gonna the ask president. We were gonna ask to adjourn in memory with yeah, someone. In so memory of Vanessa Weaver, but I, I make the request after we get to okay, the end. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hua. Um, I have no comments this evening. Um, it, proposed uh, future business meetings. Our next meeting is uh, September 12th. September 12th. And, um, proposed future agenda items. I would like to ask that um, we need to approve the president's uh, committee appointments the next meeting. That should be on the agenda. Okay. And um, I also want to, uh, Ms. Wall was talking about field trips. Again, I, I, um, I'd like us to do some field trips, the board within PCC, to, to go to some of our, um, like the welding um, department and uh, maybe the restorative um, dentistry, <laughs> yeah, <that was> and <laughs> uh, just uh, throughout the, this year, and just maybe before the closed session or whatever, and um, talk to some of the faculty and what they're doing. Because it, it's amazing, the majors we have here, and uh, I'd like to get to know more about it. Okay, anything else that, uh, Mr. Martin? Well, I was go going to follow up on Trustee Wall. Um, as Ms. Chen Lau kind of alluded to, we all realize the significance of um, our spouses in all the work that we do. And um, Vanessa Weber, the um, wife of Warren Weber, a longtime trustee, and the Webers have been a big part of this institution as a family for decades, um, has just recently passed away. So I was hoping that we could uh, close the meeting in memory of Vanessa Weaver. So moved. Thank you very much. I just kind of, I'm curious about our retreat. Are we gonna have a retreat or we're not gonna have a retreat? Well, it was supposed to be this evening. Um, it's probably gonna be delayed for a few months right now. I'm, um, because of the November elections, which I'm very involved in, I, can, I have to spend my weekends getting some people elected, <laughs> which I do in my part-time. Um, but we'll get to it. And uh, 
um, and I want to talk to the consultants also, but we have uh, Bryce uh, Harris who will be doing it when we do it. So thank you. Um, so we're going to adjourn this evening uh, in memory of uh, Vanessa Weaver, and uh, I certainly have great respect for uh, Warren. Weaver. And uh, in seeing no business before us, this meeting is adjourned until September 12th. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Sorry, do you need to... No, I was just...